We're back again for part two of our Solar Edge versus Enphase full year battle, I mean comparison. Diara from M3D UK is here too. Hello! And this time, we're of course going to give you an update on how our two systems compared over the last three months, but first we thought we'd go over some pros and cons of both systems. As a reminder, I have a solar edge string inverter with power optimizers bolted to each panel. And I have individual N-phase microinverters attached to each solar panel with no string inverter. If you haven't seen our first video, then we put a link to it in the description so you can check that out for more details. Now, I know we both prefer our own systems, but we're going to try and be as critical of them as possible. I reckon between the two of us, you're going to get quite an unbiased overview of these products. I'll kick off with my solar edge inverter, well, string inverters in general. They're very common, at least here in the UK, but if your inverter fails, then your whole solar array is down until you get it repaired or replaced. At the time of putting together this video, there's quite an issue with stock availability, so you could be out of action for a few months while waiting for a replacement part to arrive. But I don't have that problem. <laughs> if one of my microinverters were to fail, then all the others would just carry on working just fine. I lose the generation from that one fail panel, which isn't the end of the world. How many microinverters do you have again? <clears throat> 14? And, and how many are still working? That's not the point. Go on, how many failures have you had? Okay, so technically I've not had any failures, but a couple or more um, have stopped reporting to the system, but I know that they're still generating from the total system output. That's just a communication issue that will be sorted soon. However, if one did fail, then someone would have to go up to the roof and swap them out. Again, there's a stock issue at the moment, so it might take a bit of time to get a replacement. And as you can imagine, installers aren't super keen to go up to your roof, put up scaffolding just to replace one microinverter. But at least I can say for certain that even if one, even if one or two inverters did fail, all the other panels keep on generating. But you have power optimizers attached to each panel. And I know you've not had any fail yet, but We've no idea what would happen to your system as a whole if one did fail, and you'd be potentially in the same situation as me with someone having to go up to the roof to replace one of those optimizers. Actually, that leads me on to my second point. Your inverters are on the roof in the full heat of the day. I wonder if that has any impact on their reliability. It's quite well known that electronic components can fail more quickly when regularly subjected to extreme temperature changes. My inverter's in the garage. I've even rigged up a fan over the heatsink which kicks in when the inverter reports it's getting a bit warm. I know that the fan works to keep it cool because I've kept an eye on the temperature curves with and without the fan, but I don't know if it'll help extend the life of the inverter or improve the inverter's throughput, but for the small cost of these fans, I think it's worth doing just in case. You can't do that with microinverters. Ah yes. But what you can do with N-phase microinverters is to monitor each individual panel using Home Assistant. It's really easy to point Home Assistant at the N-phase envoy, which is a network connected gateway box that talks directly to your microinverters and get all the data you can ever want out of them. Current power, generated energy, and loads more. Wouldn't you say that's a brilliant feature to have, getting panel level data into Home Assistant? I mean, any solar system that can't do that is going to be pretty rubbish, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I know. I set that up for you, and you know very well that my Solar Edge inverter can't do that. I can open up their clunky My Solar Edge app and look at the panel detail there, but I can't get it directly from the Modbus interface. I have put together another video all about Solar Edge and Home Assistant integration, so I'll stick a link to that in the description. <sighs> Would you stop promoting your other videos, please, and just get on with showing everyone the graphs for the last three months? I'm pretty sure that anyone still watching this just wants to know that. Fine then. At the end of the last video, I was winning. Um, that wasn't the whole story. Okay, here's where we finished in June. I had generated slightly more energy than you had overall, but your microinverters were loving the summer sun and rapidly catching me up. Moving on to the new data then. Drum roll, please. Yeah, for July, M phase is ahead again, generating 561 kilowatt hours to my 519 kilowatt hours. See, all those comments in the last video were right. M phase is totally the best system. But the days are getting shorter now, don't forget. 
August is a very different story. Your output dropped to only 505 kilowatt hours, but I generated 529. I see where this is going. And finally, for September, I'm ahead again. You generated 322 kilowatt hours, but I thrashed that with 337 kilowatt hours. So after nine months, that leaves me slightly ahead again, generating 3,617 kilowatt hours total since January to Diara's 3,440 kilowatt hours, despite his brief summer peak. There's still not a lot of difference in the total generation of two different solutions. And I'm standing what I said in the last standing by what I said in the last video, which is choosing between these two systems comes down to personal preference. And just as importantly, where you place the systems can significantly affect your production. Hopefully, our comparison of the advantages and disadvantages of each of these systems will help you make that decision. Anyway. There's still three months to go, so hopefully you'll join us back here in January where we'll see the final results for the whole year. Yep, we'll be keeping a close eye on our monthly generation and put together a final video for you in the new year where I'll be crowned the overall winner. You've not won yet. Have you actually ever been to Wales? It's going to do nothing but rain for the next three months. Um, in fact, uh, how much to rent a snow cannon to cover solar panels for three months. Ah, uh, okay, yep, right. Anyway, thank you for watching. Goodbye.